it's budget day and I'm Beck Wilson and I'm here with David Lane, the state manager of Audmanet for Queensland and Western Australia. But he's also an expert in investing. So we're going to talk about what we're seeing in the budget today. Then David's going to tell us about the potential impacts on sectors of the stock market and particular stocks that, that the analysts are reporting back information on. Welcome, David. Thank you. It's great to be here, Beck. Uh, budget day. Oh, it's the best day of the year, isn't it, for your sector? <laughs> Don't know about Wait. best, but it's it always makes life interesting. Oh, if you're not talking on budget day, you're not talking is the, is the thing I hear. You haven't got an opinion. <laughs> um, so the big thing for your clients, David, 80,000 people in Australia have been affected by the changes to super concessions. People are saying it's a small number of people, but they're, they're your clients. <laughs> Um, well, they are, and it is only a small number of people at this point in time. Um, the reality, though, is it's a concerning change for the future because the three million dollar cap is a lot of money, no doubt. Uh, that you know, if you've got three million dollars in super, and importantly, bearing in that, bearing in mind that's a per person limit. So a couple, if they're very very wealthy, they could even have six million dollars in their super fund in a self-managed fund and have two individual balances of three million. So yes, it is a lot of money. But the problem with the the proposed change and the or now it will be legislated is the three million dollars is capped. So it's only about 0.5 of 0.5 of a percent of the population now. But in 10, 15 years time, that legislation will still be in place of a $3 million cap and it's forecast that in 10 years' time that could be end, that could end up being around 5% of the retired population. Um, so it's, actually, it, it's a really interesting set of numbers I've done for my book, which you're, you're quite across. David's been helping me with it. And uh, when, when you take the younger generation who've been paying their superannuation all their lives yep. um, at a rate above 10%, and you apply 30 years of superannuation and you give it a oh, 7% return, a young, That's person, right. a young person paying $15,000 a year for 30 years will have a balance with compound interest of $2.7 million yep. in a 30-year period. I mean, it's, it's almost guaranteed that generations ahead of us will have millions of dollars in super. Yeah, that's right, exactly. It, it is a, um, yeah, a, a, a big part of the, the current generation that we will all have large super balances and from a government point of view and from a political point of view that means that we will be reliant on our own super rather than reliant on age pensions so in the future um yeah that balances the budget well the other interesting thing about the the three million dollar cap is that it's actually on unrealized earnings as well as mm, earnings wow. so at the moment if you earn income or earn uh returns on on investments you only pay tax on the income and the realised capital gains. So if you buy an asset and it increases in value, you only pay tax when you sell it. This new rule actually takes into account unrealised gains. So if, How for example, you're a... Well, that's <laughs> going to be the interesting thing is that you know, many people actually use super to, uh, for example, buy the the business property that they operate their business out of, or we've got a lot of medical practitioners, for example, who own their uh, their um, their rooms in their super fund. So if the value of that asset increases, the government's now saying you're going to have to pay tax on the increased value on an annual basis. That sounds so, like a debate somewhere down the line. <laughs> Yes, yes, it certainly will be. Uh, at a heated point. And there was some doubt in the, uh, you know, I attended the Ord uh, economic briefing this morning and it sounded like your economists are doubting whether the legislation will ever see the light of day. Well, yeah, he did make that comment. Um, it's one of those, you know, it, it, the, the budget gets announced and it's talked about and it needs to get through Parliament. And one of the... The uncertainties around the super change is the Teal, um, you know, sitting members have, have actually, uh, you know, not been in favour of that uh, because many of their constituents will be impacted by it. So yeah, it's it's got to get through Parliament, like all of the the Watch budget this measures space, do. Hey? Yeah, that's right. 
<laughs> well, let's get let's get into the rest of the budget. I mean, that was the most controversial component, and possibly in the budget I saw, the only real negative. Um, obviously, they rolled back the the fifty percent discount that has been on your superannuation drawdowns for the last three years, but we all knew that was coming in July. So yep. just not extending that number just means everybody has to draw the same amount they had to before COVID, uh, the four point five percent or whatever it was, and. Uh, and really, other than that, we're on to the what I what I saw as fairly positive for everyday over fifties in Australia, which are the ones I talk to the most. So, let's have a talk through. In aged care, we got a fifteen percent pay rise for aged care workers, yep. which can't be a bad thing for us because you know our parents and ourselves we might need it one day, and we don't want the industry to be broken. Um, oh, that's absolutely the case, and um, you know, I guess many in the in that area have actually said it's probably not enough because it is an area that uh, you know they have been struggling to attract uh, employees. Oh, um, obviously, it's a difficult area to, to work in, um, but as you say, it's, it's essential and with an aging population, aged care will continue to be um, a very important part of the, the economy. So yes, I think you're right, that's a, a positive um, factor that's come through and um, yeah, hopefully we'll do the right things to attract more people into into helping the aged. Will that have a positive impact on any particular stocks that you you look at through Ordmanet? Oh, there's a couple that uh, you know that that will. Um, Regis Healthcare is is a, a company. Uh, Estia Health is another that uh, are involved in that aged care sector. So yeah, that will have a bit of a positive impact on those. Yeah, nice. To be honest, though, um, yeah, that was pretty well flagged before the the budget, so it's not one of those announcements that we'll see a, a massive kick in their share price mm -hmm. today. But it does go to help um, those companies because yes. one of the the issues that they've struggled with is is trying to employ people. So yeah, definitely they're a couple of the the beneficiaries of that change. Yeah, great. The next one I've got on my my list is GP's got a triple hit for the bog billing payments. And yeah. I, I think that knowing a lot of people who get the pension uh, in my world, that is an absolute winner. People were going to hospitals to get their their healthcare yep. uh, for free or rather than going. visiting GPs or not going at all. And, and this mm. is going to be a phenomenal benefit to, and, and they've to prioritise that funding towards pensioners, concession card holders and children. Now, concession card holders are not a small group of people. If you've got a deemed income of $144,000 as a couple, which is actually a lot of income mm. on a deeming basis in retirement, you still qualify for the Commonwealth Seniors Healthcare Card, which means you qualify for bulk billing. That's right. Interesting, yes. isn't it? Um, Definitely, yeah. So talk to me about how which equities this impacts, who's going to benefit? I think overall, that's uh, yeah. Again, that's a positive, um, you know, for the economy in general and and for the health of the the economy. Uh, it will. You know, there's not really too many listed, um, you know, GP practices, for example, mm -hmm. but uh, the the likes of um, uh, Ramsey Healthcare in the the hospital sector, it takes some of the pressure off the mm. hospitals. Um, and you know, then you've also got uh, a couple of the the um, yeah, the, the other um, medical businesses that should be a, an overall beneficiary, but I don't really think it will have a, a dramatic impact. Um, you know, just probably put it, take a little bit of pressure off the system. Um, but it, as you said, you know, the, the GP um, bulk billing has been an issue for quite some time. I don't necessarily know that this will do enough to mm. take all of the pressure off, but certainly goes to to help with that. Mm, absolutely. I mean, I was impressed to see that. The, um, the next one still sits in health and, and it's impressive because I think we froze a lot of the health initiatives right back at the beginning of COVID or maybe even before um, as a country and said, no more, no more, we can't give any more. And, and that's meant a lot of people are paying a lot of money for healthcare. Um, the Australian government announced a 60 day dispensing policy a few weeks ago, allowing the purchase of two months worth of medicine for the price of a single prescription. So it's two for the price yep. of one now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, that's, it's an interesting move. It was one that, um, to be honest, I hadn't 
given too much thought to. Um, but I had a, a client in a couple of weeks ago who has just retired as a pharmacist. Uh, and his assessment is that it'll actually have a, a quite a negative impact on the pharmacy industry in general. Wow. Um, and the view is that it will mean that um, they're already stretched as far as the uh, supply of, of pharmaceuticals is concerned. Um, so that will put further pressure on the supply. And the other thing from a, an individual pharmacist point of view is that they actually get paid a small amount which is the the margin on the the, the pharmaceutical drug itself, um, which is enough to cover their wages, and then they get paid a dispensing amount. Um, mm. So that will actually halve it for many of the down. pharmacists. Yeah. So, wow. um, yeah, that's one of those things that yeah may well have a, a positive impact on you know the individuals who receive the the drugs, but from a a business perspective will actually have a, a negative impact on the uh, the pharmacy companies themselves. It's a really interesting conversation when you talk about a retiree because they can act in two veins, investing their, their hard-earned superannuation in these companies that have been in healthcare for so long and that are good investments and, and yet yep. significantly impacted to their hip pocket because if they are a Commonwealth Seniors Health Card holder, they yep. will be a significant beneficiary at the pharmacy. Sure, that's right. Absolutely, yeah, and it's um, yeah. And that's... that is most retirees in Australia are able to claim that card. Correct. Yes. Yeah, and that's part wow. of the budget, and and what the the government is trying to do is is balance, um, you know, the 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 different constituents within the economy as to you know who becomes the the winner and the loser. Yeah, they focused on the hip pocket this year, haven't they? They have. Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, I think that's probably from an investment point of view and from an economic point of view, one of the most interesting parts about the budget is how exactly are we going to spend a lot more money in in an inflationary environment and still keep inflation under control? A oh, little I bit uncertain as to some of those forecasts. <laughs> Uh, I think your economist uh, told a wonderful story this morning of, of just how teetering it might be. Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah, it's uh, interesting times. Tell me about small business, David. This is probably an area you have more familiarity with than me. Uh, yep. what, what is the budget going to do here and, and how will it affect people? Yeah, so small businesses uh, will be benefited from a, a $20,000 instant asset write-off. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's a feature of, of many budgets, I suppose, over the last five or six years, but it, mm -hmm. it is a positive. So it means from a, a tax point of view, if small businesses are uh, investing in, um, you know, in physical assets for their business, they will be able to get that deduction up front. Uh, so that will have a further positive impact on the likes of Harvey, Harvey Norman, JB Hi-Fi. Um, you know, Makes up for them not handing their... out $1,000 checks to everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> they gave it out in electricity bills instead. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right. And and yes, electricity is the other uh, benefit to, to small businesses and to individual households is that there will be some relief or support to um, you know, get solar, um, you know, solar wow. power and Im improve the renewable energy of individual businesses. But then on the bigger side, there's also been a lot of money spent on renewable energy and um, that energy transition, which is a big uh, part of the the economic f framework that we're in at the moment. Yeah, right. I mean, I'm impressed to see it happening. I, I, I guess I was always a bit of a sceptic that the, the government would put the money where the mouth is and it's nice to see we're all going to live here with our children needing a, a world to live on. Yeah, yeah. And, and one of the other ways that they've raised their revenue is through the uh, petroleum resource rent tax. Uh, mm. So they are actually... Um, you know, impacting, I suppose, the likes of, of Woodside, Santos, uh, who are, you know, getting the, the traditional fossil fossil fuels out of the ground and out of the waters. So interestingly, the, the tax will be higher for those who are doing offshore drilling rather than onshore drilling. Um, so, the, you know, that's part of the way that the budget or the government is, is raising revenue is by penalising the, uh, the fossil fuel um, uh, yeah, resource companies. Your team said it was that and the smokers this morning that are, are getting, yeah, get, uh, that right. are paying the country's bills right now. 
Yes, smokers and vapors, and and there's a, a lot of money uh, being put into um, yeah trying to discourage um, both smoking and and vaping. Uh, so, mm. yeah, they're two uh, I suppose parts of the economy that it's fairly difficult from a political point of view to to argue against. Yeah, they're not going to get a lot of pushback. Not like superannuation. No, that's right. Not a, <laughs> not a minority that can stand up and say, no, fight for us, fight for us. Exactly. Um, um, the, the stand, any other standout areas where you think um, there's opportunity for companies from the budget or, or sectors that you think are going to be big beneficiaries? Well, I think, yeah, overall it's, it's one of those budgets that has been pre-announced in, in many mm-hmm. cases, uh, so there weren't that many surprises um, from a market or investment point of view, I don't think there'll be too much of a, a dramatic impact and we haven't seen much of an impact today. Um, one of the areas that you know there has been a lot of focus on and there, there is a, um, a big increase in spending is on the NDIS, um, mm-hmm. which is obviously, again, one of those parts of the economy that really needs support and uh, and needs increased spending. So as part of the budget estimates, they're increasing their spending by about 10.4% uh, and expecting that that will continue to ri- increase by about 10% a year. So it's actually the area that the, the government is um, increasing their spending on more. Um, so that will be a, uh, an industry that will um, yeah, receive additional benefits, uh, and that's obviously you know, very well needed across the across the country. Well, look, I have really enjoyed our conversation today. I right. uh, hope hope everybody can take away something from it. Um, we've been speaking with David Lane, the state manager for Queensland and Western Australia for Ord Manette, uh, and I'll put his details in the comments field below. Um, And thank you very much for joining us today, David. My pleasure. It's been great. Thanks, Beck. Thank you.